We are kicking off with Raw as the Paul Levesque era fittingly kicked off with Triple H, who, after calling WrestleMania 40 the greatest event ever, introduced our new champion, Cody Rhodes. After congratulating the American Nightmare on his big win, the game threw to a video package put together by some of Rhodes' longtime friends and the production team. Rhodes took the opportunity to praise Roman Reigns, saying that fans don't have to like him, but he certainly acknowledged what Reigns has done, adding that he's the most important star of a generation. This led to thank you Roman chants, as the tribal chief has come a long way from the hole chants that filled the Raw after WrestleMania 33, following his win over The Undertaker. Rhodes talked about being at the front of the line before The Rock arrived, and was greeted by chants ranging from Rocky sucks to ones we can't repeat. The Rock arrived with the People's Championship awarded to him by Muhammad Ali's widow Lani, while Rhodes obviously had the undisputed WWE Championship over his shoulder. It appears as though WWE has dropped the universal part of the name, and should do the same with the undisputed part, considering that there is very much a second world title in play. Before the final boss could say a word, the crowd hijacked the show by chanting for The Undertaker, and later gave Rock a shut the f up chant. This drew out an F-bomb by the Brahma Bull, and The Rock requested to exchange titles for a minute, which happened, but in the most awkward way possible. If 2021 taught us one thing, it's that title exchanges rarely go well, and the fans even chanted, this is awkward, instead of this is awesome. Finally, the final boss warned the new champion that he is coming back after his upcoming hiatus and targeting him, and placed something in the hand of the champion. Rock warned Cody not to break his heart again, leaving Rhodes seething, but with no explanation as to what he gave. As it was, it was a strong segment that set in motion the road to Rhodes vs. Rock, perhaps at SummerSlam in Cleveland, thanks to the Brahma Bulls acting schedule. The final boss is expected to be away filming the Smashing Machine until August, which likely means no physical activity for him in WWE until then. Whether it's at SummerSlam or later down the line, The Rock vs. Rhodes is a monumental main event that fans should be excited for in this new era. At WrestleMania 40, Seth Rollins not only headlined the Saturday show, but opened the Sunday event, and got involved in the Sunday main event between Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns. Fans saw plenty of the former World Heavyweight Champion at WrestleMania 40, but that's going to change from now on, as Rollins is taking a break from WWE. Dave Meltzer reports that Rollins will be taking time off following WrestleMania, and the hope within WWE is that he'll only be away for four weeks. In fan-recorded footage from WrestleMania 40, Rollins could be seen limping to the back after Cody's big win, and the Architect certainly took a beating across WrestleMania's two nights. Rollins was conspicuously absent from the latest edition of Raw in Philadelphia, and whether it's health issues or a personal choice, Seth Rollins is off TV for the time being. Rollins won't be the only name out of the picture going forward though, as it's been previously reported that Roman Reigns is expected to take time off following his WrestleMania 40 loss. It's now been added that Becky Lynch could be taking a break following her loss to Rhea Ripley in Philadelphia, which comes mere months ahead of Becky's contract expiring with WWE. When she was asked about signing a new deal, Lynch has said, we'll see, and has spoken about wanting to be more with her daughter Rue as she gets ready to start school. With that said, Lynch is being advertised for the upcoming Backlash event in France, so we'll have to see what's next for the man after her heartbreak in Philly. The grand finale of WrestleMania 40 saw the highly anticipated showdown of Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns for the undisputed WWE Universal title in a match under Bloodline rules. The stipulation meant that anything could go, and that certainly happened, as while well fans expected the bloodline to help Reigns out, Cody had backup of his own, Jey Uso, Seth Rollins, John Cena, and The Undertaker all emerged to help Rhodes finish the story, cementing his legacy as the new, undisputed WWE Universal Champion. According to Fightful Select, the element of surprise was not known among those backstage or those in production, with only a select few being privy to the planned surprises. While certain individuals in WWE were aware of the intended heavy interference during the match, this was a small group, as the last thing WWE needed was plans leaking out. Like CM Punk at Survivor Series, WWE did indeed keep things under wraps, making Cody's win at WrestleMania 40 all the more special for it. 
Now, if there was one message that was clear as WrestleMania 40 Sunday went off the air, it's that a seismic shift is underway in WWE. The message behind the event was that Vince McMahon is no longer in the picture due to the allegations against him and that a return by the billionaire is not on the horizon either. Fightful Select is among multiple outlets that say that there is a sense of optimism surrounding WWE's first WrestleMania without McMahon, as he's seemingly gone for good this time. While McMahon was gone from August to December 2022, his remote contributions resumed for much of 2023, and many of the entrenched rules of his leadership have been cast aside. Reflecting this departure from the past, there's a noticeable shift in WWE's language and approach as Fightful adds that WWE is gradually steering away from sports entertainment. This has been WWE's branding for decades, and sources report that the term pro wrestling is no longer taboo, and directives against certain terms seem to have fallen on deaf ears. Perhaps the most significant shift is the treatment of Vince McMahon himself, as WWE is actively working to distance itself from him on and off of TV. There is some irony that the man who banned countless words in the past now finds himself among those terms banned from TV, while words he previously outlawed are returning. Fightful Select adds that McMahon's name is one of those dirty words that are not to be referred to on programming or in any footage if that's possible. WWE is also trying to distance from him in archive footage, including blurring his face in the 2K24 video game, but WWE's efforts to distance from Vince doesn't extend to the family. There are no plans to disassociate WWE from Stephanie McMahon, as she's said to be well-liked by many in WWE and was welcomed with open arms at WrestleMania 40. Her promo that opened the Sunday show was kept a secret, as it was listed as a Triple H segment on the internal run sheets, and TKO sources are supporting Stephanie McMahon. There's been no talk of McMahon being back in a full-time capacity, but multiple people in the company have privately said they would welcome her back. When sources were asked about Stephanie being named as Corporate Officer Number 3 in Janelle Grant's lawsuit, they said they'd not heard of how Stephanie addressed the allegations. One source said the situation has to be complicated for the 47-year-old, and they believed Sunday's appearance was Stephanie firmly picking a side publicly. Stephanie also attended WWE Survivor Series War Games 2023 last November in Chicago, but didn't appear on camera, and that show saw her husband produce CM Punk's return. McMahon and Triple H have been married since 2003, and while there were rumors of trouble in the relationship last year, those rumors have seemingly been shut down. On social media, Triple H shared a backstage photo with his wife from WrestleMania with the simple caption, Forever. During the post-show press conference, Triple H commented on Stephanie's struggles and declared that his wife is back home now. Addressing concerns about individuals associated with Vince McMahon remaining within WWE, sources stress the philosophy of accountability and replaceability. Talent has been assured that no one is indispensable, citing past instances where key figures like McMahon, John Laurinaitis, and Kevin Dunn were absent, yet WWE flourished. This stance has been endorsed by parent company Endeavor, underscoring a belief that even the most influential of people can be replaced if necessary. The Raw after WrestleMania 39 was mired in McMahon's tumultuous presence and stands in stark contrast to the anticipated post-WrestleMania atmosphere this year. Sources have said that last year's show would have fared better without McMahon's involvement and discussed a more enjoyable and transformative era ahead with Vince gone. Praise has been lavished upon WWE's in-truck production, hailed as instrumental in shaping the new era, and more insights about the evolving landscape are expected in the coming days. But what are your thoughts of the significant shift in WWE's approach and messaging post Vince McMahon? Do you believe this departure will impact WWE's identity and operations? And what about Stephanie? Do you think there will be potential reinstatement? And what do you think will be the broader changes within WWE that will shape the future of the company? All we know is that this is certainly a new era for WWE, and let us know your thoughts in the comments below. In recent weeks, Vince McMahon has sold a ton of shares in TKO Group Holdings, further cementing his distance from WWE, but now we know more about his transactions. As Brandon Thurston of WrestleNomics reports, TKO and Endeavor are buying the shares from McMahon, with Endeavor purchasing 1.642 million shares from the ex-WWE chairman. 
This equates to $1.426 million, and TKO's purchase of 1.853 million shares gives McMahon an extra $150 million for a total of around $293 million. McMahon's immense fortune has grown bigger, but the biggest story here is that Endeavor was willing to take the shares back, highlighting that they want little McMahon involvement going forward. Drew McIntyre, incensed after losing the World Heavyweight Championship in mere minutes to Damian Priest thanks to CM Punk, was in a foul mood for the main event of Raw. That match saw McIntyre, Ricochet, Jey Uso, and Bronson Reed compete for a shot at Priest's title, and the action-packed main event saw Ricochet throw caution to the wind. The one and only hit a jaw-dropping springboard 450 splash from the top rope onto Reed through the announce table in arguably the spot of the night. McIntyre, who looks to be in the best shape of his career, was on top form as usual, calling Priest a bondage undertaker and said he'd whip the new champ but fears Priest would like it. McIntyre set up for the Claymore, only for CM Punk to come out of nowhere and prevent it, and Jey Uso took advantage and earned himself a shot at the world title and Damian Priest. This match was good, but did see an issue as during the bout, Drew McIntyre broke up a pinfall attempt by Reed on Ricochet, which confused fans who'd been led to believe this was elimination rules. If that were so, then McIntyre breaking up the pin made no sense, and it seems the elimination announcement ahead of the match was inaccurate, and this was just a standard four-way. The intensification of the Punk-McIntyre rivalry would seem to suggest that match is coming up sooner than we think, while Uso vs. Priest is a great introduction to Priest's reign. Main event Jey Uso is so incredibly over that the idea that he can be the established star ready to test Priest as a champion in his first defense is not a stretch. How well will Priest work against a competitor as over as Uso is the million dollar question now, and if he cannot deliver in that spot, his run may be what McIntyre suggested it was, a transitional one. The Raw after WrestleMania is always a big show, but not every plan made it into the three hour broadcast this week. In a backstage segment, Raw GM Adam Pearce, SmackDown GM Nick Aldis, and NXT GM Ava were seen together speaking about their post WrestleMania plans. According to Sportskeeda's sources, this was meant to lead to, into the announcement that NXT champion Ilya Dragunov had been officially declared for the upcoming draft. That didn't happen, and this news was instead shared via a tweet by WWE, and there's no word on why this announcement couldn't make it onto the broadcast. CM Punk's role during the main event of Raw was one of the many highlights of the night, and the crowd in Philadelphia had an extra treat after the show stopped filming. In a post-show promo in the ring alongside Jey Uso, Punk promised fans that the next time he's in Philly, he'll have his boots laced on, implying he'll be medically cleared to compete by then. Like Punk's native Chicago, Philly is a wrestling-rich city, and this vow certainly excited fans in the city of brotherly love. Punk got physical at WrestleMania and at Raw, suggesting he's further along in his recovery than first thought, so we may not have to wait much longer to see him back in the ring. The Raw after WrestleMania has been known as a night of call-ups, and this week's show kicked off with none other than the reigning NXT champion Ilya Dragunov. In a meeting of NXT champions, Dragunov defeated Shinsuke Nakamura to kick off the show, and the Mad Dragon has been one of the most remarkable prospects as part of NXT. Dragunov retained his title against Tony D'Angelo at Stand and Deliver, and has been booked strong for some time, in stark contrast to the man he beat on Raw. With over 100 stars on the main roster, it's hard to consistently book everyone. Nakamura, however, has taken more losses over the last few months than fans would like to see. If he wasn't being used, it would be a cause for concern, but Nakamura has been involved in several featured programs on WWE TV lately, indicating that not all hope is lost for him. Fans of Nakamura are likely disappointed with how much he's lost lately, as he always puts his best in his work, but that doesn't always translate into success. Raw also saw Jade Cargill make her singles match debut as she took on Chelsea Green, but the match was supposed to play out a little different than it ultimately did. PW Insider reports that the match was supposed to take place in the first hour of the show, that it helped set the tone for the rest of the evening, but it was pushed back to the third hour. That was because the segment between The Rock and Cody Rhodes went far longer than expected as the pair discussed the tensions between them and what lays ahead. As for the match, Green had no idea who she'd be facing until Jade came out, and Cargill made quick work of the former women's tag team champion in an impressive singles debut. 
The Judgment Day were on Raw to celebrate their victories at WrestleMania before being interrupted by new Raw Tag Team Champions Awesome Truth. Finn Balor wasted no time in demanding a title match, but Truth said that there were three of them and proposed a six-man tag team match with an ally it seemed nobody could see. The match started as a handicap match, with Finn, JD McDonough, and Dominic Mysterio taking it to Awesome Truth before John Cena's music hit midway through the match. The arrival of Cena electrified the crowd as he was revealed to be the third man for the faces, and when The Miz tagged in Cena, all three attacked the Judgment Day. The trio hit the five-knuckle shuffle in stereo before Cena's AA scored the win, and it goes to show that anything can happen on the Raw after WrestleMania. Things went poorly for the men of the Judgment Day, and things didn't go much better for Rhea Ripley, in spite of her victory at WrestleMania. On the Raw after WrestleMania, Liv Morgan set her sights on her former tag team partner and threw a steel chair directly at the head of the Women's World Champion. Liv continued her backstage beatdown on Ripley before security and others dragged Morgan away, and fans can expect a huge match between the two when the time is right. The pair's tag team ended when Rhea turned on Morgan to join the Judgment Day in a career-defining move, and after a lengthy injury, Morgan is back and has revenge on her mind. In the days leading up to WrestleMania 40, Triple H revealed that the WWE Draft would be returning, and during Raw, Michael Cole revealed when fans can expect the shakeup. The draft will take place on the April 26th SmackDown and will be finished on the April 29th Raw, which was later confirmed on Twitter by the game himself. With this new era, WWE is truly changing things with the upcoming draft, and fans won't have to wait long to see who ends up going where. Days after her title victory at Stand and Deliver, NXT Women's Champion Roxanne Perez was on Raw and faced off against former champion Indy Hartwell. Hartwell may have stood a chance of pulling off the upset victory, but she failed to listen to Candice LeRae, who continues to push her nastier, rule-breaking ways on her teammate. Perez's new heel character showed no such moral dilemma, as she raked the eyes behind the ref's back before delivering pop rocks to score the win. This was a nice introduction of Perez to fans who may not watch NXT, as she came across well, is a great wrestler, and her personality is beginning to shine in her body language and expressions. By the time WWE decides it's time for her to make a move to the main roster, Perez will be ready for the call-up, as her future looks very bright. New Intercontinental Champion Sami Zayn was interrupted by Imperium's Ludwig Kaiser and Giovanni Vinci Monday night, robbing him of a celebration that he deserved. Zayn teamed with Chad Gable to get the win over the Europeans, and keeping Sami and Chad tied together ahead of Gable's inevitable heel turn is a smart move. During Raw, a promo video for Bronson Reed was featured, but some issues with the feed have left fans speculating that something big is coming. During the video for the 2024 Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal winner, a deliberate glitch appeared on screen, and there was a similar tease before Raw when the arena went dark. Eerie music also played, leaving fans to speculate as to what's going on, with fans seeing this as reminiscent of the White Rabbit that led to Bray Wyatt's return at Extreme Rules 2022. The cryptic conclusion of the Bray Wyatt Becoming Immortal documentary hinted at the return of his brother Bo Dallas as the Uncle Howdy character that appeared not long after Bray did. Could these glitches and teases at Raw be building towards Uncle Howdy? It's certainly possible. And what do you think this is all leading towards? Let us know in the comments. As announced at WrestleMania, the show saw 145,000 tickets sold across the two nights of the show, with some notable names in the company coming from WWE's main competition. Numerous photos have surfaced showcasing Ricky Starks enjoying the event alongside friends, and it's no secret that Starks is friends with Jade Cargill and Cody Rhodes. Both The Storm and The American Nightmare emerged victorious at WrestleMania, as WrestleMania 40 clearly meant a lot to Ricky Starks. As WrestleMania 40 Sunday wrapped up, the WWE Universe bellowed the lyrics to Cody Rhodes' theme, Kingdom, which has proven to be immensely popular in the charts. Following WrestleMania Downstate, the band behind the song took to Twitter to reveal that Kingdom had reached number one on the iTunes US rock music charts. The band was grateful to Cody for making this happen, and thanked the fans for their support as the Cody Rhodes shine continues to help those around him. More from the Raw after WrestleMania, which is always a hotly anticipated show, and this year's show saw the teasing of the return of Sheamus. In a video package, it was made clear that Sheamus' return to WWE TV is in the works after being out of action with a shoulder injury since August of last year. 
Sheamus' last match for WWE was against Edge, who's now in AEW as Adam Copeland, and with so much changing in his absence, it'll be interesting to see what's next for Sheamus. At WrestleMania 39, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens won the undisputed WWE Tag Team titles in the Saturday main event and held the gold for months before losing to the Judgment Day. This win was a historic one for the Canadians, who ended the record-long reign of the Usos, but when speaking to Sports Kita, Owens admitted feeling a sense of emptiness in the run. Well, you know, this year's been pretty interesting. You know, we, me and Sammy, won the tag titles last year. That was huge, and then after that, it kind of felt like a whole bunch of nothing happened for a while, but that's just the nature of what we do. It's very cyclical. But now to be in a match with Randy Orton at WrestleMania, you know, no disrespect to Logan Paul, he's there obviously, but as a lifelong wrestling fan, to be in the ring with Randy Orton at WrestleMania, that's pretty special, so, you know, it all ended up fine in the end. It's not hard to see why Owens feels like the reign was nothing, as they had just one successful title defense on a PLE before their loss to the Judgment Day at Payback in September. Now Owens is on the hunt for the US title, and here's hoping that his reign will mean something should he dethrone the Maverick, Logan Paul. Back to this year's WrestleMania, as Cody Rhodes stood tall as the new top star of WWE, a position that John Cena was the fixture of for years. On the Pat McAfee show, Cena was asked about Cody's win and revealed what he told Rhodes after his massive victory in Philly. He said, The whole theme of WrestleMania was finishing the story. Cody's story starts today. I told him in the ring last night, and I'm sure he'll be able to relay this same message. When I got to embrace him, he had the WWE Championship in his right hand, and I said, do you feel that? And he said, yes. I said, do you feel how heavy it is? He said, yes. I said, it'll get heavier every day. I hope, and this should be the goal for the business, every performer should pass the torch up. So I hope a year from now, two years from now, three years from now, we can all sit here and be an advocate that Cody Rhodes is the greatest of all time because that's the way it should work. Rhodes has finally finished his story, but now a new one is being written for the undisputed WWE Universal Champion, and John Cena will be watching this run very closely. And we're ending with more from Cena, who due to his acting schedule, it simply isn't as free for WWE appearances as he once was, but he's already making plans to be back in the near future. Speaking on the Pat McAfee show, Cena disclosed details about his schedule for the year, including his expected return to WWE. He said, I'll go here from working on something with Honda. I have a cool Kino appearance with Samsung in Las Vegas. The convention is The Time Is Now, and they called on yours truly to speak there. I'm very grateful for that. I have some more branding stuff to do before I fly to Europe to do more filming for Head of State, and straight from that to film for Peacemaker 2. That will take us through to Christmas, and I'm crossing my fingers, my toes, and my heart that maybe, just maybe, I can tell the Hollywood world to pump the brakes so I can come back to my family for one last run. With Cena's schedule packed until the end of the year, fans may have to exercise patience as they eagerly await the possibility of his return to WWE. Nevertheless, Cena plans on being back when the time is right, and what do you want to see from Big Match John in what could be his final WWE run before hanging up his jorts for good?